Hello and welcome to this session in which we would learn how to approach, how to solve a CPA exam simulation. The first thing I always say when you are looking at a CPA exam simulation is ask yourself, what type of a simulation am I dealing with? And by inspecting visually the simulation, I see I'm going to have to input, I have to input some numbers and answering the questions favorable and favorable. That's the type of simulation. What does the topic cover? Even without reading anything, variances, very common topic on the BEC section of the exam, and it's going to be on the BAR section on the far uh, in the advanced specialization 2024. So I'm dealing with variances. That's the topic. Well, the next thing I want to know is, do I have one particular question? I don't have one particular question. Notice, they're asking me to compute my selling price variance, sales volume variance, direct labor rate variance at this point. Once you figure this out, you should be breathing very well. You can say, okay, great. I am familiar with these topics. I know my variances. I studied with Farhat. I studied with my, I studied with my CPA review course. Bring it on. Let's do this. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now, you are giving one exhibit, the standard versus the actual cost. Good, I may need this for later. And you are giving other information, which is actual unit produced and sold for the quarter with 9,500, with a profit per unit. 588 budgeted was 460 each unit was sold for $21 with a budgeted selling price of 20 so you want to look at this information real quick and you know what you have you have the standard cost and you have additional information let's move on a manufacturing company is reviewing its result for the quarter ended June 30th year 4 the company uses standard cost based on past performance and expectation for each quarter to monitor so let's read real quick what we are being asked to do. Most likely, you know what you are being asked to do at this point. A manufacturing, a manufacturing company is reviewing its results for the quarter ended June 30th, year four. The company uses the standard cost based on past performance and expectation for each quarter to monitor performance and analyze variances. That's fine. They've been using this for a while. So variances make sense to them. At the, end of, at the end of each quarter, variances are identified and investigated further. Very common practical thing in the real world and very common topic tested on the CPA exam. For column B, we want to know what's the variance, what's the number, and whether that variance was favorable or unfavorable. Looking at the first variance, selling price variance. Well, I, I, I saw some information about the selling price here, and it says... Each unit was sold for 21 with a budgeted selling price of 20. Stop right there. I sold each unit for 21 and I budgeted to sell it for 20. Before I do any computation, I have a favorable selling price variance. Why? Because I sold each unit for a dollar more. So I know it's, it's a favorable. How much is the amount? What's the favorable amount? Well, I need to know how many units I actually sold. How many units I actually sold? Well, I sold, let's see, actual unit, actual unit produced and sold for the quarter was 9,500. I budgeted 10,000 with a profit of 588. Well, I sold, notice how many unit I sold. I sold 9,000. I sold 9,500. Therefore, my favorable variance is one unit, one dollar times 9,500. Selling price variance, 9,500, and it's favorable. The second question I'm being asked is sales volume varies for operating income. What is sales volume variance? It means that I sell more volume more or less than I budgeted. Well, let's see. Actual unit produced and sold for the quarter were 9,500 budgeted 10,000. Right there. I budgeted to sell 10,000. I sold 9,500. Immediately, it's going to be unfavorable 
favorable variance. Why? Because I sold less than what I planned, what my budget, what my budget stated. So 500 unit, 500 unit less. And how much did I, how much did I sell it? What was my profit? Because sales volume for operating income. How much was my profit per unit? How much was my profit per unit? budgeted profit. Let's see. The actual contribution margin was $7.48. The budgeted contribution margin per unit was $10, $6.10. Assume the contribution margin is equivalent to operating margin. Well, it means I sold 500 unit less and the budgeted contribution margin was 610. Therefore, it's unfavorable for that amount, which is I take 500 units times 6.1 and that's going to give me 3050 and that's unfavorable now don't put negative don't put negative why because the unfavorable unfavorable is indicating it's negative so sometimes they tell you to put favorable or unfavorable negative but here it's telling you don't do it there's no negative number the next variance we're going to look at is the direct labor rate variance again what is the direct labor la rate variance that i pay more or less for my labor in other words that i pay them more per hour or less per hour well when i want to compute this ratio and this this variance i need to know what was my actual cost and what was my standard labor well my standard labor i wanted to pay ten dollar per hour right here from the standard versus actual cost I actually pay 1050 immediately I'm gonna say I have an unfavorable variance why unfavorable I paid more than what I wanted to pay 50 cent more now now we know it's unfavorable the question is how much we need to know how much unfavorable okay well to know how much we have to take 50 cent 50 cent times how many hours we work we actually work 8000 hours so we paid 50 50 cents 50 cent more for 8000 hour well that's easy that's going to be unfavorable labor variance of 4000 now here's what i want you to do and this is what i this is how i explain this when i have those variances i have three column system 1 3 three column 1 to 3 actual quantity times actual price standard quantity times the standard price so this is column one is the actual column column three is the standard column then i'll take column two is actual quantity times standard price then the difference between column one and column two is the rate the difference between column two and column three rate or price depending on i'm dealing with labor or material and the difference between column two and column three is the quantity that I use more or less or the efficiency if we're using if we're looking at hours here's what we're really what we're computing here is the difference between one and two the rate variance and notice here when we're comparing one and two when we're comparing one and two notice the quantity actual quantity times actual quantity is in both formula the only difference is the actual price times the standard price so I paid more and what I what I need to do the difference between those is I take my standard price times the actual quantity okay and I find out I paid a little bit more a little bit more 50 cent more times the actual quantity so the answer is four dollar now direct labor efficiency variance did I use more hours or less hours again I have to go to my standard I used how many hours uh, how many hours was budgeted this is the rate direct labor hour standard the standard was for this for this for this unit is 10,000 I the actual was 8,000 so guess what I used less hours so I, I was more efficient because I used 8,000 versus the standard 10,000 so immediately my output favorable here favorable and how much favorable what how much favorable by 2,000 hours 2000 hours that's great that's great it's 2000 hours and i was supposed to pay 10 2000 times 10 
I have a labor efficiency ratio of 20, 20,000 of 20,000. Again, if you're not familiar with those variances, again, Farhat lectures go to my lessons and you can see them. Material price variance, what's that? Did I pay more for the material or less for the material? Well, how do I know this? I'm gonna go to my standard. I was supposed to pay $4 per unit of material. I paid $5.25. So the material price variance immediately, I know it's unfavorable. Make sure you click the unfavorable, at least you'll get half of the answer, right? Now, how much was it unfavorable? Well, notice I paid $1.25 more, $1.25 more, and I purchased 4,000. The actual purchase was 4,000. Okay, so 125 times 4,000, what, 125? I should know this, it should be 5,000, right? 5,000 unfavorable, 5,000. Yes, 5,000, that's easy math. 5,000, always use the calculator on the exam day. Now I paid a little bit more. How about the material usage variance that I use? More material or less material? Well, let's see. Uh, I used a unit of material, unit of material used in manufacturing. I actually used 4,000. I budgeted the standard was 4,750. Well, for one thing, jump real quick and put down the material is favorable. The material is favorable. Make sure you check favorable. And again, favorable, how much favorable was it? How much favorable was it? Well, it's 750 times $4 per times the standard unit. Well, if that's the case, that's 3,000, 3,000 favorable, 3,000 favorable. Take a look at the variable overhead spending variance. Was it favorable or not? Well, I'm giving how much I actually spend in overhead. So I'm giving the actual column, okay? And I'm told here that variable overhead, it's per direct labor hour. The standard is, if it's $2 per direct labor hour, $2 times 10, 10,000 is 20,000. Now my three-way column is very beneficial here. So let me show you how you would use the three-way column. So the standard is, the standard, column one, column three. The standard is 10,000 times two, which is the standard variable overhead is 20,000. Now one is actual. The actual I'm giving the total, which is 23,440. This is the total. I'm giving 8,000 hours, 8,000 hours here from the actual, actual. Now, I, now, now it's easy. Now I can compute what was my actual, uh, what my actual rate per hour. If I take 23,400, 23,440 divided it by 8,000, that's equal to 2.93. Notice here, this is the actual the actual was more, so I have an unfavorable, unfavorable variance. So it says un, unfavorable material spending variance. And to spending, spending means what? Spending means the difference. Let me let me pull the uh, pull this here. Spending means the difference. You remember two two is eight thousand the 8,000 actual quantity times the standard price of two. We're looking at the difference, the column two is 16,000, and we're looking at the difference between those two figures. So I'm gonna take 23,440 minus 16,000, and that's gonna give me 7,440. 7,440, again, we know that variance is unfavorable, unfavorable. Okay, this is the spending. Now, did I use more or less? Well, I used less. This ratio, the quantity, it's gonna be less because I used 8,000 versus I budgeted 4,000. So this is 4,000 favorable because you could be asking the quantity, the quantity is, or the efficiency, it's favorable. Or you could be asking about the total, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. Overall, it's unfavorable 3,440, which is I netted those two. For the, for the overhead variable, specifically the variable overhead spending. I'm only being asked about the spending. So the spending was unfavorable, 7,440. Now, 
this was an actual CPA simulation. Should you panic? No. Why? This is even easier than some multiple choice questions about variances. As long as you know your variances, you should be in good shape because each of these questions is a small multiple choice. However, when, when it's giving any, any simulation, it looks intimidating. However, if you are confident, you used Farhat, you relied on your knowledge, you kept yourself calm on the exam day, you'll be able to do it. I'm always here to help you. Good luck and stay safe.